there's there's a lot of questions to be answered. So there, here's a hand, here's a question that you can answer for me. Oh, right. I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> we often talk about your first and second, you know, because we we categorize the draft rounds based on what type of player they are. So yeah. first and second round, those guys are going to start. Yep. Third and fourth round, those guys are rotational players that you could develop to be starters. Five, six, and seven, you're taking a flyer on a guy because he may have ran a 4-3. Or yeah. a guy that, you know, okay, he's this guy, let's take a flyer on him. Let, he'll play special teams, and we'll see if he can get yeah. into, you, in, into you the look mix. At it, there's something, there's a trait that's intriguing to you that you're willing to take a chance on. To and, hold him for four years. Right, and I think that's a big difference, right? Because yeah. if you take a guy in the seventh round, then you don't have to worry about trying to sign him in undrafted free agency. Yes. Because... The Bills, unfortunately, don't have the same leverage as other teams, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example. Make sure you hit that bell for more Bills news. The Bills call... Uh, let's say the Bills call um, uh, uh, a guard, right? And say, hey, it's Buffalo. You know, we want to offer you this contract. And then the agent's phone rings, and it's the Patriots. And they want to offer him a con one-year contract. They're both the same value. What's going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. The Bills have been unfortunate in the fact that the Bills, the Browns, um, you know, there's a bunch of teams that when they call and that phone rings for these undrafted free agents, it's not necessarily the team that they want to hear from. Yes, yes. But if it's the only phone call they get and they don't have right. a job, that's right. when. But my, my question to you is this. I mean, because, and we could, we could put a clause on it because you, you feel, Harrison Phelps will probably start this year, right? Yeah. And he was a third round. Yeah. So let's just, we'll extend it to the third round if we need to. But the first two rounds for the Buffalo Bills, if you had to select two positions, free agency notwithstanding, two okay. positions in your mind, the top two positions that they, that if they drafted, you'd be like, okay, those are the top two needs on this team. What, what, what would they be? Tackle and tackle. <laughs> right and left tackle? <laughs> just, I'm just not sold on Dawkins, right? That's that's probably a little hateful. Okay, let me, let me no, backtrack. No, because this it's is a well little documented. Hateful. It's fine. I know. It's a little hateful, though. I don't... Th it is well documented, but that's that's irrelevant. I'll, I'll pick somebody besides tackle, but I definitely think a tackle, either at right or left, it doesn't matter to me. I think you definitely need to bring in a tackle, and I like some of the tackles in this draft, so mm -hmm. I, I'm high on some of the tackles. A lot of people are going to say wide receiver, and I'm going to say no to that because those take a long time to develop. Mm -hmm. And while it's while you know the long game is you want to get somebody in to develop with Josh Allen, right? Um, I think that guy's Foster. I think you've already done that. Yeah. So I don't think you need to double down on that, right? No. So, like the same thing. Like Reed was a perfect example. Reed and Kelly came in right around the same time, and they spent their whole career together, basically. Yeah. And there were other players that came in along the way, but they weren't. It wasn't Reed, right? So I, I think Foster fits that mold of who they want to hitch their wagon to and develop with Allen. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna fawn away from um, from wide receiver. I'm gonna say tight end. Tight end and lineman. Tight end and tackle. Yeah. Tight even, end and tackle. Even after we did the statistical breakdown of how much Brian Dable uses tight ends, you yeah. see that. You That's how much I like TJ Hawkinson. I'm going to be honest with he's you. He's going to turn over a new leaf and it's, say, hey, I got TJ Hawkinson. Now. Hawkinson is, is an absolute animal. That's how much I like TJ Hawkinson. If it's Noah Fant, I would understand because they drafted him to keep him away from the Patriots. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I really, really like T.J. Hawkinson. Like, the reason I say tight end, it's a position of need. He's the guy. If you're going to spend a top, a one or two, a first or second round pick, it's, I would imagine that it would be for him. I don't think you're really stretching for depth at the tight end position outside of T.J. Hawkinson. And even no fan, I'd be okay with because I get the risk that he has. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. So, okay. um, yeah, tackle and tight end. I will agree with your assessment for wide receiver. Yeah. Because look, I'm going to say something right now that's not going to be very popular. Okay. I don't like DK Metcalf. Uh, you know what? I'm not a fan of him. Well, and call me insane, guys, and you can. Believe me. Comment section's right down here. You can give him plenty of times to do it. The guy just, 
I made the, I made the passing comment last time with it, and it said, "Looks like Tarzan plays like Jane." I don't, I don't see Chris Robinson. I don't see a guy. I mean, that has a a body of work that says to me, "Hey, he's going to be really good at the next level." He's a fun, he's a athletic freak. There's no denying that. I just don't know how that's going to trend because there's athletes and then there's football players. Okay, I don't know where he is on that on that spectrum. Well, and there's not a ton of film on him either because he got hurt, got the neck injury, and which scares me to yeah. no end. So as far as the, the position, you're gonna think I'm insane. As far as the that's position, different from position because I said I put the clause of the third third round in there <laughs> for my own personal enjoyment. Yeah. Um, so first and second rounds, two starters that I think that they would go with. I'm gonna say. Corner and running back. Hmm. Okay. Corner the first round, hmm. running back the second round. Now, I'm insane because I like Le- I like Levi Wallace. I love it. I love his play and everything. However, the depth at the cornerback position and how teams are starting to throw the ball so much more now, you have to have a, a, be at least three deep at that position. Yep. So if you draft. If Greedy Williams is there at nine. I don't know why I like Greedy Williams so much. You've been talking about Greedy Williams I have. for months. He's he's your TJ Hawkinson. Yeah. He really is. Yeah. So if you had Greedy Williams, Trey White, Levi Wallace in the slot, you got Teron Johnson on the other side, Hyden Poyer in the back. You can you please tell me who's throwing on the Bills at all? Well, I think that that helps your pass rush. It does. Right. It, it will definitely help your pass rush. My clause for the third rounder was going to be the center. Who's draft a center in the third round? Elgin Jenkins and Garrett Bradbury, and they're not going to be there in the third round. No, they're not. But my initially, prior sure. to the prior to the combine, yeah, you thought you'd get Bradbury in the third. Yeah. yeah. So, and then I would take a running back in the second round because you do have the oldest running back tandem of one and two in the league. In the league, and by you, far, you could pick up a guy that's a, a formidable starter that's not named Holyfield in the second round, and I think you would be fine. Why do I feel that a cornerback and a running back would be picked up in the draft? Because I think they're going to just throw that money at linemen during free agency. Yeah. I think they're going to sign two, maybe three, offensive linemen okay. in free agency. So that's why I think my draft board would go corner, running back, center. Well, and, and then I, just buy a couple tackles. Crazy. And I mean, they're going to fill out the roster pretty quickly because the guy gets to ninety sooner or later. They yeah. already got fifty-four. So yeah, they're going to bring in two to three guys that they think could sit and start right now, mm-hmm. right? And then they're going to backfill with the undrafted free agents and you know the you know the rest of the uh, the guys they can get their hands on through free agency. So I'm with you there. Okay, that's fascinating. Well, I'll use a line real quick. That you always use. Why do you draft a running back right now in this draft? Because you don't need to draft one. Yeah, you don't. You, you don't, don't need to draft. When it comes to, even Bean said that. If it comes to you drafting for need, you're not going to. No. Right. Well, and you know another example of that is, and I hate to harken back to this, but the Patriots drafted Sony Michelle. They didn't need to. Uh-uh. They didn't need to. They draft signed him. Jeremy Hill. They had Burkhead. They had White. They yeah. had. They didn't need to. No. And they did. Yeah. And he's a dangerous weapon. You know, but they also were very careful with him. They wanted him to. They wanted him not to get burnt out, so they didn't use him in the beginning of the year. They worked him in through practice, so that way when he got the concept, it was something he could execute. That's a big thing with Parcells is you have to understand the concept. You have to know your role, and it took him eight weeks to do that. But eventually made it onto the field, and look what happened. Right? I don't know how much uh, they, they they do pass pro in Georgia. Right. So we, picking up a well, he was also part time. Yeah, picking up a blitz in Georgia is different than picking up a blitz for New England. You got to know what you're doing in New England. You're not you're not touching the field. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, but that's how mine would play out, at least. Well, that's a fascinating thought. Yeah. So, if you're drafting a running back now, yep, right, yep. Are you looking for the best pass protection running back you can get your hands on? Because you can immediately install him in third down. I'm looking for a Theo Riddick or Duke Johnson. Who we've yeah, some people. Have, I'm not looking for a pounder. Right. You can get those guys off the wire, any of them. Yeah, I agree with you. Any that. guy that's 28 to 31 yeah. who's put on a few pounds, you can get. Yeah, I agree um, with you. I want a guy that's going to be a threat in the passing game that can pick up a blitz. Now, I know that's a lot to ask out of a rookie. That's fine. 
However, you increase because when we when we looked at games last year, you looked at when McCoy was on the field and when Ivory was on the field. Ivory's not a big receiving threat. No. So you guys know. All right, we could just stick a linebacker on him. It's not a big deal. Right. I want a guy that they're afraid to stick a linebacker on if he's in the game, but he can still pick up a blitz if he has to man protect. Him. There was a kid in the draft that they were talking about him being just phenomenal pass protection, and his name just escapes me. I'll figure it out. Is it a Pac-12? No, I don't know conferences. Oh. I don't pay attention to that stuff. Listen, my my brain is like a bookshelf. Have we ever talked about this? Did we set it on fire? No. No. My brain is like a bookshelf, right? And the bookshelf is full. So every time I learn something new, oh, you so whatever take you a put, book, right? yeah, a book falls off, right? So I don't pay attention to college conferences because I just don't care about that. That's a book that's not on my shelf because the more new stuff I add, the more old stuff falls off. You see the problem that this creates. I think you need to rebuild your library. So you have them going offensive lineman, tight end, which I think is much more realistic than my scenario. I understand that. <laughs> I really, I do, I do, I, do okay. I understand that. Yeah. Um, but how much of a wrench does it get throw it in there if they pick up a free agent tight end, if they pick up a lot of offensive linemen, which is fine. You have to, I think they're throwing people off their scent by looking at 10 offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I mean. And then like, signing a bunch of them. Well, I, you know, that's the nice thing about free agency happening before the draft is that you get the opportunity to find out work. You know, you get to sign these guys and you get the opportunity to actually know what they're about mm -hmm. um, before you get into the draft, which is the ultimate mystery game, right? Yeah. But it's all a chess match. Well, a lot of it's questions. A, chess match. a lot of match. questions you can answer right after free agency. Sure. And that month sure. leading up to the draft, you're like, oh, sure. they they had these they had these ten holes. They filled these eight. Mm -hmm. They're going here for the draft. So. Right, and a lot of people put a lot of stock in that, but there's a lot of times where teams will double down on something. Oh, absolutely. You know, especially across the offensive line because you can't just earmark a guy for the left or the right side. Yeah. And say, you know, oh, well, you know, they drafted, a, you know, they signed a left guard, so, you know, they've already got this guy, so they're not going to need to draft another guard. Well, maybe they will. Maybe they'll draft a tackle and move down to guard. Especially. Maybe they'll draft a center that can play guard. You know? Especially if you're the Cowboys and half your defense gets arrested. Right. <laughs> Don't let him hang out with Zeke. <laughs> it's, that, it's that cereal Simple. bowl, man. That is. <laughs> Make sure you hit that bell for more Bills news.